Today in the show, we talk about an area of financial planning that almost nobody specializes in because of how complex and nuanced it actually is. How's it going, everybody? Jason Croft here. And, you know, when it comes to financial planning, it's, it's so difficult already just to plan for yourself and maybe your spouse in retirement. What happens when you have to plan for and fund your your child's retirement as well and to really take care of them once you're gone. These are the huge things in life that parents of special needs kids have to deal with. And that's where my guest on the show comes in today, Matt Adamchek. He is really dedicating his life to these families, right? Um, he, he is one of these families and, and through his, his own needs and experiences, he took it upon himself to become specialized in this area and be that guide for so many other families. So I'm excited to, to share this interview with you. And yes, as you can tell with the Bubble Mobile back here, we are sponsored today by Bubble Dallas. Um, folks over there are just doing an amazing job. They are a ride sharing platform. Um, all their drivers are retired off duty police officers and they specialize in providing rides for folks with special needs, um, kids eight and over, and senior citizens as well. Um, they're doing an amazing job here in the, in the Metroplex and expanding well beyond that as well. So I appreciate them for, for setting this, this entire episode up. Let's jump in with Matt Adamchick. Matt Adamchick, welcome to the show. Nice to be here. Thanks, this is, Jason. This is a blast. And who do we have here in the back? Oh, we got the special care bear. Nice. Yeah, he goes it. with me everywhere. I love it. <laughs> We have a, a, this is our first guest on the show, um, backseat guest, that is. Well, this is fantastic. I am so excited, uh, especially after our talk um, a couple of weeks ago about everything that you do with, with Match Mutual. Um, give me a little background on it. Give me a, give me a high level there um, okay. and, and tell me what Mass Mutual is all about. Well, uh, Mass Mutual just you know, believes in families first, really. Okay. And the, the special care program is about 20 years old. We just realized that, uh, the, the families that have somebody with special needs, they have a, an, an extra level of concern. It's their, uh, financial needs are probably three times as hard to solve oh, as, sure. a, as a regular family. And for it, a isn't longer, concerned with that. and a longer span of time as well, like generationally and, even more so. Well, you know, most of us, are, we expect our kids to grow up and become independent somewhere around 21, like at least when they finish college. You know. Right. Um, some earlier than that. But um, these guys are not going to be self-supporting. It's, it's kind of, we know that. So the, the biggest question on our mind is how can we help ensure that the child with special needs is going to have a financial foundation? You know, for a secure, comfortable, and meaningful life. Absolutely. Even after we're not here to do it. Right, so. right. So, I want to go back a little bit and, and get a little bit of, of your history on what brought you to <laughs> to this and to what you're you're doing right now. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a journey. Well, I myself uh, am the father of a special needs son. We'll be 35 this summer. Oh, wow. And uh, uh, I used to be an engineer. Ooh. And when Max was born, it was 1983, and uh, there weren't people like me. Uh, you had to sort of piece it together. You got some help from an attorney. The schools helped a little, but they weren't all that knowledgeable about government programs, about you know what this, what did this mean long term? They knew sure. what to do while the kids were in school. They couldn't help you think too much about well, what about after that. Right. And, and that's where the big worry kicks in. You know, so uh, when I was, uh, well, in, uh, let me think, 2010, uh, I lost my job. And so I had to figure out a new thing to do. And I was, um, I thought, you know what? I, um, I, this journey of being the, the dad of a special needs son, it's taken a lot, a lot of extra work to get this right. Some things worked out just fine. Other things I did, it didn't pan out the way I was hoping. And I thought, I could really be a pretty good guide to somebody. Oh, yeah. I happened to meet through a networking group. I met a couple of guys that were already agents with Mass Mutual. And they started 
well, just talking in general about what they did, but over the next year, I learned a lot about this special care program. And I said, you know, I think, I think that's what I should do. I, yeah. I'd, I'd really like to learn how to do that. So it's almost, almost like giving your life skills that you've developed, this expertise that you've developed just by going through it and almost formalizing it in a way now through, through Mass Mutual and through this special offering now. It, yeah, exactly. I, I had had other jobs uh, where I sold like group benefits. Okay. Okay. I worked for a couple of companies that were outsourcing HR services. Oh, okay. So we sold group benefits and payroll and things like that, which gave me a little insight into things like saving for retirement in a 401k plan or, you know, the, the kind of group life insurance that you might get from your employer. Mm -hmm. But the problem with all of those things is that you can't tailor them very well to individual circumstances. Uh, and yeah. I realized that, okay, that really takes a, an insurance company to be able to do that. Right. And, and the more these guys told me about it, I said, I, I think I can learn I can learn the technical elements of that, and I already know the emotional and personal side of it pretty well. Oh, yeah. So what? So what's sort of step one in that? When, when obviously meeting these guys was huge in that. What's step one to say? Okay, I can. I can probably do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, step one, I guess, was just making a few referrals to them, mm -hmm. and for different forms of insurance for nor you know. Families that don't have anybody with special needs, right. and and maybe to a couple of businesses, and watching how they presented stuff and how did they how did they evaluate uh, a client's circumstances, figure out where the risks are that had to be covered or ought to be addressed, and how did they present that to clients, what the clients saying when they heard it, you know, how did they react to it? That was kind of the first step. And okay. So that's all I did for a year. I wasn't an agent. I didn't join Mass Mutual. I just made referrals. Interesting. But okay. they were very successful referrals. I seemed to have a knack for knowing who would probably need it. Yeah. And say yes, and who wouldn't. Mm -hmm. So they, they managed to sell every one of the people I referred, to, which is <laughs> extraordinary. They, uh, you make you make friends really quick that way. <laughs> yeah, and then, then they they said, you know, you why don't you just become part of the part of the gang join the agency yeah. and get in you know do this with us so that's what I did but uh, there, I'm the only one out of a hundred people in the agency who specializes in this wow. so it, it is a sub market you know mm -hmm. and it's um, you know uh, families like my own we're in special needs families we're, we're pretty cautious uh, it's slow to trust and uh, to develop a, a confidence in someone in um, I recognize that myself and, and in some, a lot of my clients, they need a little time. And I think maybe one of the reasons for that is that we can't afford a mistake. Okay, not a big one. We, maybe a small one. But we've already got expenses that are higher than usual. And and so we there's not as much extra cash to do things. And you can't afford to have to do it twice. So you're very cautious about who you're taking your advice from and who you trust. Yeah. So my business developed slower. I mean, I'm, I'm a very trustworthy guy and all that. Sure. But still, <laughs> they need, they don't know me though, and they need time to find that out. Right. And see if, right. see even if with they, the bear, it takes a while. Even with the bear. Oh. So, you know, so it, it, it just goes, it just progresses slower. Right. And so that's maybe why others don't follow this path because okay. it, that's just, what I was gonna ask. it takes that's a little longer to develop your business. And I'm, this is my seventh year of this, yeah. and, uh, and now, uh, uh, with, even before we wrap the car, you know, we, we, I'm, I'm starting to be known nice. to the people that need to know through certain nonprofits, certain school systems. That's that's where the kids are, right? And so that's how you can meet the families. Right. Oh, that's that's great. Well, I'm glad it's 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 going well and progressing now. And some of the things that I found just so fascinating i really wanted to have you on the show and, and and talk about were some of those ways that you help these families navigate all of these things the things that you alluded to earlier that you know there wasn't somebody there for you right in 83 way back you know way back then what are some of those things from laws that you have to think about and ways of 
transferring money and, and all of these things in order to make sure that that person relying on you for the rest of their lives, even after you're gone, um, is going to be safe, is going to be well taken care of. That's a that's a great way to put it. You you really absorbed a lot from that first conversation. <laughs> I really did. It was I was really yeah. informative, honestly. Yeah. The 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 key here is that for a typical family, um, they'll plan, uh, they'll do their estate planning or their retirement planning around three big milestones: the kids going off to college, the parents retiring, and then the parents dying. Mm-hmm. But for kids uh, with special needs, there's a um, um, diagnosis and early intervention. Then there's IEPs all through the schools, their time in the schools. What does that mean, IEP? IEP is an individualized education plan. Okay. That starts from about age five um, on until they get out of high school. Gotcha. And, but it's somewhere around age 13, 14, 15, the, there's a topic called transition. And that's when we, we start to concentrate more on uh, independent living skills and employability skills, a little less on academics. How, how how are my how are the kids doing with adapting to you know independent life? Can they cross the street by themselves? Do they are they okay on their own hygiene? Yeah. Can they make some decisions? Like it's always good to let them choose their own clothes every day. Maybe figure out if you're in a restaurant, let them tell you what they'd like to eat. Don't order for them. Just yeah. read them the choices and see what they pick you know yeah and you have to i mean as a parent you got to guide that a little bit you know? yeah but, but even more so and, and i'm assuming it's even harder because you're just in that i know as a parent like just in that natural state of just like okay let me take care of let me take care of let me take care of right and so it's second nature it takes a real conscious effort to stop yourself <laughs> sometimes and realize you're really trying to encourage independence yeah right? yeah <clears throat> so then after that uh they turn 18 and here for a, a lot of my families that's when they finally qualify for some um, social supports. And the three okay. big ones are um, supplemental security income, Medicaid, and maybe Medicare. Okay. okay? <coughs> there are other additional, under Medicaid, there's uh, six waivers in the state of Texas. And the word waiver means that the state is allowed to waive certain income and asset requirements and allow this person to receive benefits gotcha. that they might not otherwise get. Okay. So uh, then we move through that, and uh, we have to worry about the age 22 when they're dismissed from school. They either graduate, you know. Anyway, gotcha. they're not allowed to stay in high school anymore, right. and that's when uh, that's a big impact on a family. And a lot of times, uh, both parents have been working, mm-hmm. and the, the child's had a safe place to go that was free, and right. they didn't have to pay for that. It's, free education and and now the school bus doesn't come anymore so one parent is probably going to have to at least go part-time and very often they have to quit while they figure out well what's my child going to do all day now Mm -hmm. okay and also if i figure out some things like a a day have maybe um a lot of people like the there's a really excellent one in plano called my possibilities that's where my son goes and um uh, but but there's there's a charge, right? If you're lucky and you have Medicaid and a Medicaid waiver, maybe they'll help pay for that. Mm-hmm. If if you don't qualify yet, then you have to pay for it. So yeah. so you have a case where income's going down and expenses are going up. That's a pretty dramatic impact. Oh, yeah. I like to try to anticipate that with my clients. So like if I can meet them when their kids are only you know seven or eight years old. They exactly. got, this isn't going to happen until they're 22. But get ready. <laughs> get ready. If you save a little more, if you start thinking about what happens after high school, where's it going to go? Maybe you can shorten the time it's going to take to get us all set up. Yeah. Maybe the financial impact won't be quite as great because you'll have savings. Right. Right. And to be and, able to and, mentally prepare for one of us will have to, most likely have to quit, you know, or right. stop working. Like, yeah, it, if it hits you with six months to <laughs> prepare, that's that's pretty bad news. If you have 12 years to prepare, that, that that makes a huge difference to have that insight from someone like you. And there's a lot of things that it helps if somebody can say it out loud to you. Yeah. Like, you know, the first choice you make about, let's say, a, a dehabilitation place, mm-hmm. it might not work. Your kid might not be successful there. You might uh, not like the way it's run. It might not be right. So you could have to do it over 
several times before you find a solution that, that fits yeah. your family, right? So, so this amount of time where I know when people first hear this interview, they might say, well, I could get that done in a month or two and be back to work. <laughs> well, it, it might be a year or two. Yeah, interesting. Be, be, okay. If you have to do do-overs like we do, yeah. you know, you're not, it's, it's not working out so well. You got to take them out of there and find a new place. Right. Okay. So, there, there's a lot to it. There, your, your child might have health issues. I, I mean, not, I was speaking initially about somebody who was basically pretty healthy, just had other special needs. Maybe they were intellectual developmental needs or something sure. like that, but they're, they're healthy and fine. What if they're not? And the reason yeah. you're having to stay home longer is because your child's sick and yeah. you just have to get them through it, you know? So oh, yeah. there, there's all sorts of stuff that can happen. You know? So anyway, that's, that's something to anticipate at 22. And then the next milestone, the next big one, yeah, of course, uh, uh, is uh, when the parents are going to get ready to retire. Right. Now, that's that, that's kind. Of, there's a couple of things. I'd like to sort of go back and forth, if you don't mind. No, no. At 18, um, that's when we all become full-blooded, independent American citizens, <laughs> even special needs kids do. Yeah. So, according to the law, according to the society, there you go. So uh, there's a couple interesting things. They don't send grade reports to the parents anymore. They're not also, entitled to it. The kid's 18, he gets the grade report. So even though he's in school. Even though he's special needs, even yeah. though he may not understand the grade report. Unless you're the guardian or an advocate, and these are special appointed things. Mm -hmm. Guardianship is a legal process, right? Right. It's not just so, an assumed you're the parent, so you're No, you're you know, you're if you send your son to college when he's eighteen, you're not entitled to his grade report. Even though you might be paying the tuition, right? You're probably paying the tuition. Interesting, right? You're not entitled. He has to actually agree, tell the college it's all right to send my dad my grades. <laughs> if he doesn't say that, you don't get them. Yeah. So that so that happens to everybody, even people with special needs who aren't able to live alone. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have to make a judgment about that regarding your your own child. So like, well, do I need to get guardianship or right. take some action? And so that comes up at eighteen. And because of their independence, they also qualify. That's when they qualify for these government benefits because the parents' resources and income are no longer taken into account. Okay, wow. they were up until age eighteen. You, we each have a parental obligation or a duty in the eyes of the state to to support our children. Sure, but that ends at eighteen. You don't have a duty after that, and so, um, so the state says, well. How's this person doing now? This new adult. Well, he doesn't have any income. Well, he then he does qualify for supplemental security income. Okay. So there's additional funds today. The maximum payment seven hundred fifty dollars a month. Mm -hmm. Well, that's money coming into the family that they didn't have a month ago. Yeah. Right? So maybe so maybe helps, we can start but... helping with the financial plan. Right. That will continue unless he starts earning a lot more money. And then uh, the. In the state of Texas and many other states, if you're granted SSI, you also get Medicaid. Okay. And that, that solves a gigantic problem for uh, parents whose kids are being forced off their own health plans. Right. They've been carrying them on their plan all that time. But this is a permanent health insurance. This, Medicaid has its shortcomings, but it is... It has very few exceptions that it won't pay for. Right. Oh, that's okay. great. It's, it's in one way, yeah, so excellent health insurance. Gotcha. So, yeah, that's a huge... That's a big <laughs> load off your mind. Oh, yeah. One of the factors that you were going to have to think about for special care planning is where, where are they going to get health insurance? Yeah. Okay. Who's going to... Yeah, who's going to... What happens when I die? Then when are they going to get it? Oh. Okay. So, Medicaid's going to fill that gap. Right. That, that's a relief. Uh, when the parents retire and claim their social security, then there's an added benefit. If the child was disabled before the age of 22, they're entitled to draw benefits on their parents' record. Even if the child never worked a day in his life. Really? He can draw a social security benefit on his mom or his dad, whichever one's the larger benefit. Mm -hmm. and you know how big that is? It's half of what you get. Wow. This, this is an important thing. In financial planning, I mean, this is going to take a lot of pressure off the family oh, yeah. once this happens. And of course, the parents are going to have to be at least 62 mm -hmm. before they, they can, sure. you know, rely on this. But but there you go. We're talking about the timeline when the parents are ready to retire. So they will be. Right. 
right? Right. So this will be a big help. Right. To have somebody like you <laughs> to navigate, to even think of this. This is an option. This is a, like, how else do you get this yeah, information, right. I mean, well, right? Did you know before we started this? Of course not. Yeah. Right. You know, well, none of my clients know that wow. until they come in the first time and I walk them through like I'm doing with you. Yeah. And then, of course, the next big milestone is the parent's death. What happens then? So that's where we get into the discussion of things like special needs trusts and stuff like that. And the whole reason for creating a trust is to preserve access to public benefits. It's very important that the child doesn't own outright, own the asset. Okay? He can be the beneficiary of the asset, but he can't directly have title to it. Right. Because That's the trick. That would negate the... As soon as he has title, he's no longer poor. He's no longer destitute. Right. And in the eyes of the states, it only takes $2,000. Wow. So, so yeah. how many mistakes could we make? We could open a little bank account for our son or daughter, and every time she gets a birthday present from grandpa, he said, gives her $100, he gives her 50 gives her 20 We put it in that bank account. And that goes on for 20 years. That number could hit 2,000 if we're not careful. So it's not like an amount, like it's accumulating, even just accumulates over all those years. Right. At $2,000 at any one time, that's it. So what was your listeners gain from this? Don't make a bank account like that, okay? <laughs> right. Well, I'll tell you what to do instead. You can still save the money for your child. Right. Just don't do it that way. Right. Okay? In their name. So and in the, yeah. there's, there's ways of getting around this still qualifying for benefits. That's what the art of special care planning is all about. Oh, yeah. And How that was, I know that was one of the points that when we talked on the phone, I was so impressed with, like, because it's 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 seemingly such a little thing in terms of, I mean, it's essentially one decision, right? That's a massive <laughs> outcome well, one yeah, way or the other. Yeah, you're right. There, you know, there and there's one other step in the, after you got your plan together, you know, working with me and an attorney mm -hmm. and an accountant. You, we'll work with several advisors on this. <clears throat> you need to share the what your plan is with your, your family. Right. And, and two really important people are the grandparents. Because let's say they, they're, they know they've got a, a grandchild with special needs and they, sure. they know it's hard. So they want to provide something, okay? And, and maybe that something is going to be that they own some life insurance and they're gonna they're gonna direct that for the benefit of the grandchild, right? Mm -hmm. But they don't know fancy words like for the benefit of the grandchild. They just say I'm gonna leave it to him. Right. I'm gonna make him the beneficiary or her the beneficiary. And if they do that, they really get the money. Wow. And let's say they that maybe they maybe they just break off a twenty thousand dollar chunk of a hundred thousand dollar policy. Yep. And they leave it to the special grandchild. Well, that's more than two thousand. All the benefits cease. Medicaid is at the, the, the supplemental security income goes away. Yeah. Boom. And now you have to re-qualify. And if you go through this process, qualifying initially is a little bit of an effort. <laughs> it's a job. <laughs> you don't want to do it twice. I imagine. <laughs> you really don't want to do it twice. It's not only hard on the parents, it's kind of hard on the kids. Yeah. So you really don't want to put the kid through that twice. Yeah. So, the, so the grandparents need to know that, yeah, I set up a trust, so name that as the beneficiary. Right. Not my, grand, not my son right. or my daughter. So then, then after the, the parent's death, then we, uh, we need to figure out how long the child's going to live. Oh, sure. And provide for all of that. And that's, that's perhaps the biggest focus of special needs plan. Yeah. But if you want, if I could just boil it down this way, I have to build a retirement plan for the parents and a second one for the child. Uh, and I have to retire somebody who's like 30 or 40 years younger than his parents, right? Right. So that retirement's going to last that much longer. Oh, yeah. So it's it's hard. Absolutely. Okay, it's hard. So that's the job. Most of us only have to figure out one retirement plan right. for, for <laughs> mom and me. But the rest of us have to figure out a second one right. for, the child, for our child. And so what goes into that sum? Is it all sort of, is it just this this combination of investments, state money like you mentioned, and all, you know, on just kind of a perfect mix along yeah, the Yeah, the real, I mean, in a nutshell, we, we want to preserve eligibility for any 
state supports, government mm-hmm. supports. And I'm using state to mean the state, but I'm, it's, some of them are federal. Sure. Federal and, or state supports. But those have, a lot of those are means tested and have eligibility requirements. Right. Um, and to that, and, and they only provide a very basic existence. It's not going to be an enriched and fulfilled life like we all want. Right. right? If you have more than one child and, and you have some with disabilities and some without, we want the same for all of them, right? Absolutely. I mean, yes, my one son is a doctor. That's that's what his potential will allow for or yeah. his gifts, right? Right. And my son with special needs, it's a different great life. Right. But I still want it to be a great life. I want it to be as enriched and fulfilled as, I, as it can be. Absolutely. Like... Isaac, uh, the, the guitar, I mean, the, the violin player, can't remember his last name right now. He, he gave a concert where one of his strings broke right at the beginning. And he just turned to the conductor, nodded, and said, go ahead. And he played, he played so well, the audience were on their feet. Okay. And at the end, he said, sometimes it's the job of the artist to do all you can with what you have left. <laughs> And that might be a good a good sentence for our special needs planning, right? Absolutely. It, and we do as much as we can with what we have. Yeah. Right. So. I love that. So that's why we we want to maintain out. We we want to do all we can. So I'm going to add my resources. My clients are going to add their personal resources to obtain the most fulfilled and enriched life possible right. for their child. That's wonderful. I just love what you're doing. I think it's huge. How can how can we help? Just sort of spread the word and get people to. Yes, yeah, so, you know it's 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 so good to have speaking opportunities where I can tell this story a little bit and meet the parents. Right. It, it all starts with a meeting, a phone yeah. call, and then an in face face to face meeting. We're going to understand. I spent a, a long time just listening to the story. What is yeah. the, this family story? What's the What's the diagnosis? What's the prognosis? What are your circumstances? How have you handled it so up to this point? And what do we need to do? We get that all figured out. We take an inventory of what we have to work with. You know, where are we? Where are we trying to go? Right. Right. Then we qualify. If they haven't already, we qualify for all the government supports that we can to ease the burden on the family. And then we add the family's resources in part remembering that they need some for themselves and some for their other kids. Right. right? And then we do the, we try to do the best job we can for that special needs guy. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And that's a great, that's a great lesson across the board in sales is (laughs) what you under, stop first, listen to your customer, your client, see what they really need first, and then see if what you have is there to help. (laughs) Yeah. And just let it take the time it takes. So those are a couple of little there's some free ones. Absolutely. <laughs> Honestly, like that, I mean, what an education right here. And I, and I think, you know, we all either have someone in our life who needs this information or know someone who does. Like it's it's not that many points of separation away. So I encourage all of my listeners here to, to spread the, this education that you, that you get from this show and share this episode with, with someone who needs it. Um, and, and how do people link up with you? What's that 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 process there? Well, uh, we put our phone number on the car, perfect, and email in the bubble ride phone. that we're in. Yes, look at the bubble car, take a picture of it, <laughs> and just call. Um, we're pretty well known by a lot of the school districts. They they've heard of Mass Mutual Dallas Fort Worth Special Care Planning. Perfect. And just uh, just uh, ring us up. Um, there's a website. Um, MassMutualDallasFortWorth.com. I think the Perfect. Dallas Fort Worth comes first. It's DallasFortWorth.MassMutual.com. Perfect. And, All right. And check us out that way. The, a lot of the counselors and the special needs transition specialists and so forth in the in the schools, both public and private, they know us. Very nice. Yeah, and, uh, you can yeah, and that's that you way. know that's really that's really great too because there's you know it's sure we can go to your website sure we can listen to you but if we have other touch points right we can go through and say tell me about Matt." <laughs> <laughs> if you tell like me. it if you like what you're, you're hearing um i'm on linkedin and i post regular articles on linkedin on a nice. full range of topics a lot of them are about special needs mm-hmm. a lot of them are about saving for college a lot of them are about retirement 
So I'm sure uh, you're going to find something that you can that you're going to like yeah. and say I didn't know that before. And golly, I'm glad I just heard that. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for being on. This oh, has been absolutely fantastic. Pleasure for me too. Appreciate it. Wow, it's just so fantastic to um, to share this episode with you and share that knowledge uh, that that Matt has. So please do share this around and and anybody that that you know who needs this episode, get it in front of them. Um, get Matt in front of them, and uh, I think they'll be they'll be grateful that you did. Thank you so much to to Bubble for sponsoring this episode. Make sure you uh, check out bubble dallas dot com to learn all about them and certainly go uh go find matt out there on the internet as well as you can see on the on the lovely vehicle here dallas fort worth dot mass mutual dot com we'll see you on the next one it's saturday night It was Saturday night and I'm feeling kind of silly When the coat on cause the air was chilly But I'ma make my way out to the record spot Gotta find some new breaks for the beats to rock I gotta come with the flavor like some lifesavers On now and later's got the beat maker If I'm a player it's like a tape deck And if you miss the gig then take a rain check Stacks of wax piled high to the ceiling Need a U-Haul truck if I would think about stealing But it's not my steed so I commence with the digging No kidding, something that'll keep the beats hitting what I'm getting so